So it's just a bit of a way to sew it. Yes. yes. So I see in the paper that you're from my name is Marie Watt, and I'm an artist participating in the Dreams Wiser Than Waking exhibition at the Snipe Museum of Art here at Notre Dame University, and I've got four woodblock prints represented in the exhibition. Uh, they were made at Crow Shadow Institute in Pendleton, Oregon, and I always like to share a little bit about Crow Shadow. Um, it was co-founded by an artist named Jim Labrador, whose work is also represented in the show, and he is a wall of Cayuse, I believe. And uh, Crow Shadow is this very unique um, for making organization on the Confederated Tribes of the Umatilla Reservation in Pendleton, Oregon. And uh, there they have a master printer who works with artists who come from all over the United States. Um, and they collaborate with um, indigenous artists and, um, and Western artists and artists from all over the world. But one of the missions is to bring contemporary indigenous artists to Crow Shadow um, for the sole purpose to uh, make prints and to collaborate and interact with people in the um, the community at large, and so um, I regularly return to Pendleton to make make prints of Crow Shadow. And uh, one of the goals with that institution is not only to kind of be able to to help contemporary artists get their their work out into the world, but it also um, was established as kind of an academic um, economic development resource um, for artists. As well. Today I'm hosting an open to the community sewing circle, and it's happening. And um, at the sewing circles, uh, what I like to say is, my there's an invitation to participate, and in that invitation, I like to state, no sewing experience is necessary. You can come and go as you, as you wish. Uh, you're invited to bring friends, and it, if it's at my home or studio, I might try to. Feed um, but in this particular case, uh, in exchange for your stitches, I will train you a little silk screen print. Uh, so uh, there's many participants, participants who have shown up today, uh, and it's happening all day until um, 7 o'clock when we're um, closing for the reception. stitches start to meet up, there's these threads and how those threads connect. And for me, it's kind of a metaphor for how we're all related and, and connected. Um, I think the other thing that I really like about the sewing circles is that there's no um, expectations that people will talk or share. But as you can tell by the, hopefully by the um, conversation behind me, that oftentimes while people at the uh, table might not know one another, I think people get to know one another really quickly. I think part of that is that you're tucked into something as intimate as a piece of cloth and your eyes are diverted so there's no pressure to talk, but in some ways I feel like stories just flow. I also like to uh, talk about how, for me, the sewing circles, they might relate in some ways to a sewing bee and women's work, but I also really like to think about how they relate to barn raising where you get together with your neighbor and neighbors and how many hands make light work and then at the end of the day you all kind of come around the table and have you know great food and um, I think that right now in this this age where so many so much of our lives are limited by technology and machines and not necessarily getting together as neighbors I think that in some ways um, it makes the sewing circle kind of this welcome experience in people's lives and I know for myself, like, I feel like when I participate, I'm always um, surprised. Like when I see friends I know and participate in some circles, I still feel like I learn new things about them. But I also kind of hope that they're conduits for people to get to know one another. And maybe in the ideal sewing circle, people go home having exchanged phone numbers or emails um, so they can kind of get in touch with one another. The sewing circles 
actually kind of grew out of this interest in blankets. And um, I started with this goal of collecting blankets from thrift stores um, with, with the idea that I wanted to create a totem whole life form and a form that kind of would reference linen closets and uh, the conquerors of the Pacific Northwest and um, architectural um, themes for example and then sculpture too such as like Grand Kinsey's Endless Column. And uh, in collecting the blankets from thrift stores, I would get anything five dollars and under as long as it was wool. And I was really uh, taken by surprise in some ways when I started collecting all these blankets. Friends would come over, seeing the blankets amassing, and they would say, "Oh, I, my grandmother used to have a blanket like that, or I used to have a blanket like that." And they uh, would launch into this story about blankets. And I think I really quickly realized that these objects that we take for granted in our lives are Full of, um, full of stories, or there are objects that have these sort of extraordinary histories and views. So another interest of, um, that I have with blankets is that they're very personal to me. Yeah, in the Seneca community, we actually give away a blanket to honor somebody for being witness to an important life event. And, uh, and so in that way, I think for a lot of uh, tribal communities, uh, blankets are really important to our communities.